Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you uh, in this series, uh, in this section of this series, is uh, the conditional proof. Conditional proof is hugely important. I can't stress how hugely important conditional proofs are because sometimes you won't have what you need in a premise and you're going to have to make assumptions, right? So in so far as you make an assumption, you're going to have to demonstrate and, and sort of um, prove and consolidate and arrive at the, the assumption um, so that everything else is, is uh, sort of discharged and I'll get into that in a second. So um, as far as our formal proofs of validity, that's the end of that. But now what we can do is talk about conditional proofs, and you can use a conditional proof in any of these forms, right? The conditional proof can be integrated into existential generalization. Conditional proof can be integrated into universal generalization. Conditional proof can be integrated into universal instantiation. Conditional proof can be um, integrated into existential instantiation. Conditional proof isn't separate from these. Conditional proof can be incorporated um, as um, an introduction of an assumption um, into any of these uh, forms. And with that, we will, uh, I will, I will uh, give you a conditional proof which will conclude this, this section of the series. I think I'm going to erase uh, number three and, and go on. Okay, so goodbye to number three. Conditional proof. And actually, this is pretty big. Probably should erase something else. Actually, I'm going to erase. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. All right. Um, lastly, number five, conditional proof. And now that I'm thinking, uh, this is actually pretty long, so let me do it like this. Let's do it like this so I have room. This is conditional proof. And it's uh, CP. Alright, so CP, conditional proof. Okay. Um, let's say we're just given one premise, right? We're only given one premise, and we're going to use conditional proof to um, prove the formal proof of validity for this, um, this uh, argument in predicate logic. Um, so imagine that we're given this. For all x, if x is a b, or x is a d, then x is an a, and x is a c, and the conclusion that we're trying to attain is, therefore, for all x, x is a b, if x is a b, then x is a c. Okay. Um, this looks a little intimidating, right? But we will work our way through it. It, it, it won't be difficult at all. I'll go slowly, right? Um, we're going to attempt to use a conditional proof. And before I begin the discussion of conditional proof, I want to, you know, I want to explain why we're, why you should see that we need a conditional proof in this uh, argument, right? The conclusion that we're trying to attain that uh, attain in sort of ghetto terms is we're trying to get a conditional statement from um, uh, x is a b and uh, x is a c, right? So that, that it's, how do we go about doing that? Right? How do we go about, and this is line one, this is line one. Okay, um, well, here's how we go about doing that. Um, people have different systems for conditional proof. Some people don't use uh, um, a number when they use the assumption. I personally do use a number, identify my assumption by a number. You technically don't have to do that, but I do. Um, uh, so line two, I will say, we're going to assume this, right? We're going to assume uh, the B. So we get B, Y, and this is an assumption. I'm going to 
assume by as our assumption. We're not given by, right? There's nowhere here do you see by by itself, right? There isn't a claim. And furthermore, it's not that you're given um, for all x, x is a b. If we were just given that, then I could universally instantiate that claim, and then it would be by. But I'm not given that, right? Because it's attached to this. So I have to assume by. There's only one thing for me to do is to assume by. If I make that assumption, however, right, if I assume by in my argument, it has to be the case that somewhere along this line I arrive at um, uh, y is a c, right? If I can prove and deduce from this assumption y is a c as uh, an instantiation of this generalization, then I see that uh, my conditional proof is complete because I was able to get to, to um, y is a c. So that's what I need to do. I need to keep working my argument down until I get to um, y is a c, at which point um, I will have actually done two things. I will have concluded my assumption, tidied up my assumption. Um, it will be discharged and then I can generalize the claim. Okay, so on line three now, on line three, let's, uh, let's, what do we have here? Let's instantiate, right? We can instantiate two claims, right? The first thing that we can do is we can instantiate this universal claim. So we get B, Y, or D, Y, right? B, Y, or D, Y. If B, Y, if Y is a B or Y is a D, then um, Y is an A and uh, Y is a C. And that is line one, and I'm, I'm writing this too big, I need a... I should have gotten more space. Line three, we have uh, B, Y, or D, Y, which is if, uh, not if, Y is a B or Y is a D. If Y is a B or Y is a D, then um, Y is an A and Y is a C. And that's, um, on line one, we've used universal uh, instantiation. Okay, it's cool to do universal instantiation first because there's only going to be universal instantiation. There is no existential claim. Line uh, four, we have, um, we're going to do, an, uh, no, no, that's, that, that's it, okay. So we have this claim, right? By, by or dy, if that is the case, then this. Now, this part isn't as intuitive, right? It's not in, as intuitive, but the more you go through the rules, the more you'll recognize what you need to do, right? My assumptions are on this line. What I need to do now, and this is all going to be too too tight, what I need to do now is I see that I have my by, right? But what I want to do is I don't have like a dy isolated by itself, but I can, I can, I can assume, not necessarily assume, but I can introduce this dy, which is what I'm going to need, by what's known as an addition, right? So I can have um, B, Y, or D, Y, right? I can have B, Y, or D, Y, and the way that I was able to do it is I've introduced uh, an addition, right? Um, and the question is, well, how do, we, how do we go about doing that? Well, on line two, on line two, I have B, Y. So I added a D, Y to line two, so it's addition, line two, and it's A, D, D, right? It, it shouldn't be that hard. There is a rule. The rule says if you have, you know, Y is a B, and you wanted to add something that you weren't given, in a sense, it's not an assumption, but you want to add something that you weren't given, you can add this D, Y um, to the claim. So that we have, right? B, Y, or D, Y, we see that fits to this sort of dynamic. It looks the same. Um, and why was that important is because obviously I'm trying to isolate this. This has the same format of if P then Q, P therefore Q, which is exactly what I'm trying to do, right? So we get to line five, and now we recognize we can do, you should see this now, you can do a modus ponens, right? If P then Q, P is that exactly the same form, P therefore Q, so we're able to get A, Y, and C, Y, right? by doing uh, on line three and line four modus ponens. Now we're getting closer to having, we have 
um, our by isolated, and we're trying to remember deduce our cy, right? And once I get to the cy, then I've I've closed up, I've tidied up the assumption. So all that we're trying to do now is get to cy. How do I do that? Well, as we did before, we know that we can do commutation on this, right? We can flip these, right? So line six, we can have cy, and if y is a c, then uh, ay, y is an a, and that is line five commutation, right? All right, so that's the rule. And again, just go through the rules. Once we've done commutation on this, then we recognize we can do a simplification on six, right? So on line seven, we can get CY, which is what we need to get, right? Now I'm gonna have to erase some of this. Right? Uh, right? Um, and this is what I wanted, right? I assumed BY, and I'm trying to get to CY, so I've tidied up my assumption, right? And this, but first before I do that, this is six, and it's simplification. So what you do is, you, you show that you've concluded the assumption. You draw this really big arrow. You bracket the line, you come back up to where the assumption is, and you draw an arrow to where the assumption begins, right? So from, from line two, all the way until, and actually, do you, like, yeah, well, that's how I do it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so from line two, and I, I think you, you do put the assumption on the line, um, from line two to line seven, this sort of the scope, right, the range, the scope from, from two to seven is a proof that this assumption is correct. And what is the assumption? In line eight, what it was that I assumed was B, if Y is a B, then um, Y is a C, right? If Y is a B, then Y is a C. And how did I do that? Well, from line two to line seven, from line two to line seven, I use the conditional proof. I made an assumption based on a premise that I did not have. I assumed this, and I demonstrated that my assumption was valid. So it's really a two-part, um, the conditional proof is at least, there's more, but a conditional proof is at least a two-part proof of validity. One, you have to prove the overarching validity of the argument, but within that, you have to prove the validity of your assumptions within the argument. I have to prove that this assumption is valid because I was able to deduce CY from BY, and you saw how I just did that. And insofar as I'm doing that, I will prove the overall validity of everything, right? So we are able to get if Y is a B, then Y is a C by conditional proof through the scope of lines two through, through uh, lines uh, seven. And then obviously, my claim is a universal claim. So what I want to do is on line nine then, which will tidy up the rest of it, is I have for all x, if x is a b, then x is a c, and that is on line eight, universal generalization, right? Uh, and that's it, that's it. So what I was able to do in this is I was able to arrive at my conclusion, right, for all x, for all x, if x is a b, x is a b, then, then, x is a c, x is a c, I proved my um, conclusion by making the assumption of by. From that assumption, I was also able to prove um, and to deduce the sort of subset conclusion, right, this, this, uh, this conditional proof, cy, which allowed me to justifiably make the claim if y is a b, then y is a c, and then I was able to generalize, generalize that claim uh, to the conclusion. So, with that being done, uh, this concludes my discussion on uh, the proofs of validity within uh, proofs of validity, formal proofs of validity within predicate logic. Um, and in the conditional proof, what I'll do possibly in other videos is to show you multiple conditional proofs, multiple assumptions within. Uh, an argument and sort of the complications and the rules that govern multiple assumptions. But hopefully this, uh, this made uh, uh, formal proofs of validity within uh, predicate logic more accessible. Um, it's really nothing too intimidating 
once you do a little bit of practice, and that's basically what it requires. It requires uh, some practice. Again, I'll make sure I put up the the rules, the the, the rules, so that you'll be able to sort of cross reference those rules, um, and use it to solve your own problems and create your own problems. So, with that, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.